Hi, this video is brought to you by Online 2IS. We are going to see the measures to control inflation. First, let's look at the contents of this video. We are going to have a look at monetary measures, fiscal measures, trade measures, and administrative measures. Monetary measures are the measures that are generally taken by the central bank of any country. In our country, it's the RBI. So let's look at what RBI does to control inflation in our country. First is credit control, then demonetization of currency, and then issue of new currency. Let's look at them in detail. Credit control is divided into quantitative measures and qualitative measures. Quantitative measures basically aim at controlling cost and quantity of credit. The amount of credit that directly flows into the economy is controlled by quantitative measures. Again, it's subdivided into conventional and non-conventional measures. The first one under conventional will be bank rate, then cash reserve ratio, statutory liquidity ratio, open market operations. Under non-conventional, it's liquidity adjustment facility, which is again subdivided into repo rate and reverse repo rate. Please do note that all the measures on this screen is very important for prelims preparation. Then we also have market stabilization scheme. Now let's look at them in detail. Under conventional measures, the first one is bank rate policy. Bank rate policy is nothing but the rate fixed by the central bank at which it rediscounts first class bills of exchange in government securities held by commercial banks. Now what is rediscounting? So there are bills of exchange, which is nothing but a written document that assures payment of money by purchaser to seller for the goods purchased at a future date. Now, supposing if the person who sold the goods and who has the bill of exchange needs money urgently, he approaches the bank to get the bill discounted and he gets the money in advance before the maturity date of the bill. This discount rate is charged by the bank. So, for example, the holder has a bill value of 1000 rupees and he approaches the bank. The bank might charge him a discount percentage of 8 and the holder of the bill will get the holder of the bill will get 920 rupees after 8% interest that he pays to the bank and these banks they normally approach rbi to get the bills rediscounted so now rbi charges a percentage of discount and gives money to the banks so rbi will charge say 6% and uh, the banks will get 940 rupees in this process the banks make a profit of 20 rupees so to control inflation, what RBI does is they increase the rate of rediscounting of these bills, which will discourage banks to approach them to get the bills rediscounted. This ends up reducing the money supply for lending. There is also another impact of RBI increasing the rate of rediscounting, which is that the commercial banks also increase the rate of discount at which it discounts the bills to the consumers. This discourages the customers and they won't discount bills. Hence, this leads to lesser supply of money in the market. The second one is open market operation. Sale and purchase of securities, bills and bonds of governments and private institution by RBI is basically open market operations. Securities, bills and bonds are nothing but written documents that are issued to banks in public against money by RBI. So in case of inflation, what RBI does is it sells the, these instruments to the public and to the bank for some money. So it takes money from the people and banks and it gives these instruments. So this reduces the supply of money in the market and thus in inflation is controlled. To increase money supply, RBI does the opposite, which is they buy these instruments and they give back money to the public and the commercial banks. The next measure is variable reserve ratio. This measure is used to control credit by varying the percentage of reserves that scheduled banks are supposed to maintain. The first one is cash reserve ratio. This is nothing but the percentage of net time and demand dep deposits that scheduled banks are supposed to maintain with the RBI. So to control inflation, RBI increases this percentage, thus leaving little money to lend to the public with the banks. This, this, this is very important, so do know the current rate of cash reserve ratio, which is 4%. And also note that cash reserve ratio should be maintained only in cash and not in kind. Then let's look at statutory liquidity ratio. This is nothing but the percentage of deposits that scheduled banks are supposed to keep with themselves in their ward. This is just a precautionary measure so that the banks don't lend beyond their capacity. This is according to the Banking Regulation Act. So to control inflation, RBI increases this percentage. So banks should keep more money in their vault, thus 
it leaves the banks with lesser money to actually lend. This reduces the money supply in the economy. Do note that SLR can be in cash, gold or in bond. The current rate of SLR is 21.25%. Now let's move to the non-conventional measures. The first one under it is liquidity adjustment facility. It is usually a short-term credit control measure. It has two instruments. The first one is repo rate. The second one is reverse repo rate. Repo rate is nothing but the rate at which commercial banks borrow from RBI by mortgaging their securities. To reduce inflation, RBI increases the repo rate, thus banks will borrow less, hence they will be left with lower money to lend to the public, thereby lowering money supply in the economy. The current repo rate is 6.5 percentage. Reverse repo rate is just the opposite, it's the rate at which RBI borrows from commercial banks. In case of inflation, RBI increases this reverse repo rate. If the reverse repo rate is increased, the bank will raise interest rate on loans to customers because it receives high interest from RBI, which is a less risky lending. Lending to customers, first of all, involves risk and also if it can get higher return from the RBI than it gets from the customers, banks will be encouraged to lend more to RBI than to the public, thus reducing the supply of money in the economy. The current reverse repo rate is 6 percentage. The next measure under non-conventional measures will be market stabilization scheme. This is a fiscal com monetary instrument. This is usually used to control liquidity due to excess foreign exchange flow. RBI issues government securities to absorb excess liquidity in the economy and the interest for these securities is paid by the Ministry of Finance. The amount and date of issue of these securities is generally decided by RBI in consultation with, with Ministry of Finance and Government of India. Let's move to qualitative measures. Let's look at all the subdivisions in detail. The first one is regulation of margin requirement. Margin is nothing but an amount contributed by a buyer for the purpose for which he or she borrows. For example, if someone wants to buy a machine, he or she cannot get full amount as loan. He or she has to contribute a certain amount to purchase this machine. So high margin rate is fixed to prevent excessive use of credit to purchase or even carry securities by speculators, thereby controlling credit and thereby controlling inflation. The second method is regulation of consumer credit. Credit given to consumers to buy durable goods is called consumer credit. Under this there are two methods. First let's, let's look at minimum down payment. It is the amount that is initially paid by the consumer to buy any durable good. If the initial down payment is fixed at a very high rate, the customers are generally discouraged from purchasing. Hence the demand for credit goes down. With period of repayment, if the installments, if the number of installments are low, the amount per installment goes high. This again discourages credit and this controls inflation. The third one is rationing of credit. Here the RBI rations credit flow to different sectors. There are two methods under it. The first one is variable portfolio ceiling. RBI sets maximum amount of credit that can be lent to various sectors. Different ceiling is set for different sectors in the market. The second method for rationing credit is variable capital to risk weighted asset ratio. This is also known as capital adequacy ratio. It means the availability of sufficient capital as a percentage of risk weighted assets. So normally the balance sheet of banks will have two sides. One is the asset side, the other one is the liability side. Liabilities will show the amount the bank has to pay to others. So the shareholders money, which is the capital will lie on the liability side. On the asset side, the money that has to be paid by others to the bank will be shown. So the loans lent by banks are listed on the asset side. So basically RBI assigns some, risk, some risks to these loans. This is based on likely chance of a loan to be repaid or not repaid. For example, a bank can expect a loan to be repaid by a rice vendor but cannot expect a loan paid to a stock broker because stock exchange trading is very risky compared to rice business. So more risk is assigned to the loan that is given to a stock broker. So a certain amount of risk is assigned to these assets. Basically the loans that are given to consumers that are considered as assets, a certain amount of risk is actually assigned to them and the capital is more or less fixed. If the capital to risk weight ratio is changed by RBI, only the asset has to be adjusted. That is the amount of loan has to be changed. So, so this way the credit can be controlled. If risk assigned to a particular sector is high, it will reach the ceiling with low amount of credit. 
RBI uses this capital to risk weight asset ratio as, no, as a norm to ensure that banks do not lend beyond their capacity. The ratio is normally fixed by basal norms, which are fixed by banks for international settlements. Now let's move to the next measure, which is direct action. Sometimes RBI issues certain policies to the scheduled banks and scheduled banks are supposed to follow them. Like for example, RBI can ask scheduled banks to send proposals for loan that are beyond certain amount for scrutiny by RBI. This keeps scheduled banks lending under check so that they do not lend beyond their capacity. The next measure is moral suasion. Sometimes methods like persuasion, requests, informal suggestions and methods of advice of do's and don'ts are given by RBI to commercial banks and commercial banks are expected to follow them. The last measure under qualitative measures will be publicity. This means banks will be expected to post their monthly statements of assets and liabilities in various websites and periodicals. This brings about more transparency and banks will abide by these credit control measures. The next measure that's done by RBI is demonetization of currency. This is a situation where RBI declares certain denominations of currency as invalid. This is taken under extreme cases. The last qualitative measure is issue of new currency. In this measure, first of all, all money in circulation is withdrawn. And new currency of single unit is made equal to many units of old currency. For example, new currency of 1 rupee is made equal to rupees 100 of old currency. So money supply is reduced to 100 and this reduces the money supply in the economy. This is actually taken under extreme cases. The second measure is physical measure. Physical measure normally deals with the policies that are issued by the government. The first one is reduction in unnecessary expenditure. This leads to less demand from government side, therefore this lowers prices, thereby reducing inflation. The second method is increase in direct taxes. When the money left with the public is reduced by asking them to pay more direct taxes, their demand goes down, thereby this reduces inflation. This reduces the demand from the household side. The third one is decrease in indirect taxes. Taxes like excise duty, sales tax and all will be reduced. This brings the final price of goods and services down. The fourth one is surplus budget. Surplus budget simply means less expenditure than revenue. This reduces money supply in the economy. This lowers government's demand for goods and services. The third is trade measures. It simply refers to import and export of goods and services. Supply chain is affected because of shortage of goods. Supply is increased through import from other countries. At and these imports are made at low or nil import duty. Import license restrictions are eased. Export duty is increased so that so that the goods do not get exported and there is supply in the domestic market. The last measure is administrative measure. The fourth is administrative measure. The first measure under it is ration wage policy. When the wage is fixed for the labor, this reduces the cost of production. It at least keeps the cost of production under check. Cost control leads to price control. The second measure is direct price control. This is by fixing maximum prices through administered price system and subsidies. The third measure is rationing. Rationing of goods that are short in supply is called rationing. This can be done through a public distribution system. This also keeps prices under control. Thank you for watching this video. The next video will be on Urjit Patel Committee's recommendations. Bye and have a nice day.